the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. 
And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again Jesus went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. Jesus came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when Jesus came, he went up to Jesus and at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then the crowd laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of Jesus' followers deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. The crowd caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed Jesus at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do you still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? The whole council condemned Jesus as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And Peter went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, but again Peter denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. 
and Peter broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused Jesus of many things. Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer? See how many charges were brought against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release you for the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? The crowd shouted back. Crucify him! Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, Pilate handed over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. After they clothed Jesus in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crowd, they put it on him, and they began saluting him again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. The soldiers compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry Jesus' cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And the soldiers crucified Jesus and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified Jesus. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with Jesus, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking Jesus among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, he was calling for Elijah. and someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. 
These used to follow Jesus and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if Jesus were already dead, and summing the centurion, he asked him whether Jesus had been dead for some time. When Pilate learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On the last Sunday of the month, we have a children's sermon. The CYM and our Sunday school is going to be meeting today at 10 o'clock, and they're going to use this portion of the service for their meditation today. On Palm Sunday, we hear lots of opposites. Actually, throughout all of Holy Week and Easter, we have lots of opposites. So I'm going to encourage you, and I'm going to need the help from our choir members behind me here to help me tell what are the opposites. Now, here's the deal. The kids who are listening right now, I want you to say it loudly too. When I name something, you're going to say it's opposite. I think you all know what that means. Uh, for example, when I say day, you're going to yell, Night! There you go, you got it right. At least our choir did. I hope you did. So we're going to have a little fun with this about the opposites. Thinking about what is the opposite. But again, you have to yell it nice and loudly so that it uh, wakes up everybody else who might still be sleeping in your house. You have to yell it nice and loudly for everyone to hear. You promise? Okay. We'll, do, we'll start with the one you already did. Again, day... Very good. Here we go. Ready? They're going to get a little harder as we go along, but here's number two. Hot. Cold. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. So far, so good. Up. Down. Light. Dark. Rough. Smooth. Oh, we didn't all agree on that one, did we? <laughs> okay, I had, I had smooth, but uh, anyway, rough. Meaning, uh, you know, where you rub your fingers over something and it might be very, feel very rough. Well, if it's very smooth, it isn't. It's the exact opposite. Here's an interesting one. Naughty. Nice. Oh, we got universal agreement on that one from the choir. Naughty, nice. Big. Small. Oh, I didn't get that one. I got the word little. Oh, okay. All right. So we'll go with small. It, it's the opposite. Noisy. Quiet. Mm, that's pretty good agreement on that one. Wet. Yeah, like it's raining right now outside here today on this Palm Sunday. It's wet. The opposite of that is dry. dry. Very good. Okay, here's another one similarly. Sunny. Cloudy. Oh, yeah, we're not agreeing on that one either. Some said cloudy. Some say rainy. Well, if you look outside right now, it is raining. So, yeah, it's kind of rainy. How about this one? Winter. Summer. Oh, that one was easy. Winter to summer. Young. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's all about a perspective there. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Hosanna. Uh, uh, what's the opposite of Hosanna? You heard the word in the gospel lesson today, by the way. What else were people shouting? Ah, crucify him. 
Yes, on Palm Sunday, we read the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And as they go into this city of Jerusalem, everybody was shouting, Hosanna. Well, the word Hosanna sounds very, uh, you know, you only hear it in church, but uh, the word Hosanna means to save now. It's basically something that's meant to convey a sense of urgency. Do it now, Jesus. Save us now. Because at the time, Jerusalem was run by Romans. Another country had come in and was ruling Jerusalem. So the people who lived there were ruled by some outsider, some outsider government. So they were saying, Hosanna, save us now from the Romans. And just a couple days later, those same people were saying, crucify him. You notice in today's gospel story that you hear those, that crowd was shouting, crucify him. They turned on him really quickly. It was kind of the opposite, wasn't it? Hosanna, a shout of joy. Crucify, a shout of anger. Okay, last one. Here it is. Death. Ah, yes, indeed. Our gospel story does not end with Jesus' resurrection today. On Palm Sunday, we're not allowed to go that far. We know that next Sunday, a week from today, we'll be shouting the uh, word that we haven't been able to say during uh, all of Lent. And next Sunday, we'll, we know that we'll be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, but we're not allowed to go that far yet. This week, what we remember is the suffering and the death of Jesus. The opposite of death is life. We like to go right to that life part because we understand what life is. You and I are living right now. And generally speaking, many people are afraid of death. But Jesus wasn't. Jesus faced even his death. He, was, he faced his suffering and his death. And it all happens in the space of just a couple of days. This week, that we call Holy Week, we go all the way from shouts of Hosanna to crucify him. We go all the way from death to life. Opposites. Think this week. Pay very close attention to all the readings that you hear this week during Holy Week. And listen for those opposites, because there's a lot of them. We just pointed out a few. Hosanna, crucify, death, life. This week is about learning all those opposites in that wonderful, powerful, important story about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Would you join with me?